Matthew's birthday party, but he loved your present. Please call when you come up for air. Hi, Sydney. It's Millie Ellis. Haven't heard from you in ages. I know better than anyone how busy you are, but I miss seeing you. Hope you're okay. Bye now. Uh, yeah, this is John at City Dry Cleaning. Your clothes are ready to be picked up. Oh, my boss called me as soon as I got ready to leave. Listen, I know I told you what this little party was going to cost, but in a matter of a couple of weeks... And one of the last things he said to me was, don't worry about the money. I feel better already. So tell me, uh, these buyers, they're from back east. They've got a lot of money. They've been around, right? Yes. My past experience, these guys are usually a little more aggressive than the crowd we've got upstairs tonight. Uh... Well, I moved to Vegas and started dancing with the chorus. And then I got my own dance numbers. Hey, you do like me, don't you? Oh, yeah. Hey, I flew through ice, sleet, and snow 3,000 miles just looking for you. Well, we could kind of move things along, avoid the rush, if you're ready. Now, let me see if... You understand that I understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> well, you know how these guys get around girls, a couple of drinks. You expect them to at least start. <laughs> It'll happen. Jack. Hey, you're just in time for the party, gorgeous. Oh, I'm not so sure I like the competition. Well, that's the foundation of our business, isn't it? A little friendly competition? Well, you check with me later. Meanwhile, it's your party. Cheers. Well, I'm satisfied, and I'm sure the boss will be tomorrow. Fine. Well, like I said, this cost me a lot to put together. The girls, the suite, the food. Take credit cards? Mm, not this trip. No. 10,000 in cash, and we can lock the doors till early morning. I think that ought to cover it. Listen, uh, after you remind your buyers how nice you're being, I'd like to buy you a drink downstairs. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have time. Why not? Wait, well, you said that a, a lot of the guys were shy and they weren't being very aggressive with the girls. Listen, they can hold hands all night for all I care. No, it's, it's, it's just because it's a lot of them are young and they're married, and when they get home tonight, their, their wives are going to be curious. What are you talking about? A lot of young cops' wives are just a little naive, and they ask questions like, do you have to sleep with the girls in order to get a conviction? <sighs> yeah. Sorry, Peter. Uh, when, a, when an officer loosens his tie, it means he's already got a violation. What is this? You said 3,000 miles through the snow. Would you believe three miles in the smog? Let's go. Lady. I demand a lawyer. I demand a lawyer right now. Honey, where you're going, there's lots of lawyers. Come on. I, I don't understand. We haven't done anything. Yeah, I know. We'll do something some other time. In the meantime, the party is over, sweetheart. Sit down. All right, let's take a walk. You first. Take it easy, huh? This is the closest we're gonna get to a drink, my dear. Okay. So, Jeff, honey, I noticed you're still wearing your necktie. Couldn't get a violation? What can I say? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> she fell in love with me. Honey, this is a serious question. Look at it. Is your name really DiMaggio? Would I lie in writing, Luann? According to R&I, you were arrested 11 times last year for doing favors for somebody. you got to stop people from taking advantage of your good nature, Luann. As soon as you're finished, they're ready again in the booking office. Eight, ten minutes, no more than that. Administrative Eyes, Rodriguez. It's Millie. Oh, hi, Millie. Is Sydney there? 
Oh, yes, yeah, she's here, but she's pretty busy. Oh, well, what else is new? I know she works too hard, but you know she thrives well, on tell it. Tell her that I called, will you? I'll give her the message. Thanks. Take care, Millie. Yeah, bye. bye. Anybody you want notified in case of emergency? Yeah, Bruce Springsteen. I'm sure he'll rush right over. He's on four. How long you known Peter? Peter, the one in the office there? Mm-hmm. Look, I hardly know him at all. Look, I have the bail money. My lawyer's waiting downstairs. If you can keep me here all night, it's not going to change a thing. It's a nickel and dime bust, and you know it. Peter, you got it wrong. This is the last time you're going to be in friendly hands. What are you talking about? Peter, forgetting about your dancer from Vegas. She crossed the state line. These are agents uh, Jameson and Perrin, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Captain? Excuse me. You uh, have a chance to explain uh, Title 18 and the man actor, Peter, yet? We were just getting around to that. He's been rather reluctant to talk with us tonight. Oh. <laughs> no problem. We'll take it up over at the Federal Bureau. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're blowing this whole thing out of proportion. Peter, I tried to get you to talk to me. Now you're gonna have to talk to the government. Anybody want coffee? Catch us later. I'm sure we can work something out. Like what, Pete? Circus still going on downstairs? Last count, four lawyers, five bail bondsmen, and a dozen street pimps trying to find out what happened to their ladies. It's nice to know a working girl hasn't been completely forgotten. Yeah, what is this? I come back from two off, you got my nice clean police building all filled up with hookers and yeah. homicide investigators? Yeah. I just don't run that kind of house. Bus go down easy? Actually, it was kind of fun. What's going on down at the other end of the hall? No fun at all. Housewife in the valley just got shot. High-powered rifle. Got it. She was walking to the garage. Any suspects? Well, maybe. They think it could be the husband. And you girls get tired of all this. Come down to my office. I did last week. The line was too long. Oh, I wish that were true. I almost forgot. Millie Ellis called a few minutes ago. Oh, damn. She called earlier. The second time tonight, I'm going to have to try and reach her. So is she getting used to her retirement? Oh, she hates it. She was a great cop, wasn't she? The best. And as a present for her 55th birthday, they gave her a job shuffling papers. So one day, is that going to happen to us? I was 24 when I came here. And I can remember Millie coming up to me and saying, kid, you look scared. And she spent the next 14 years teaching me everything she knew. Does she have any kids? No. She has two terriers she's crazy about. Has she ever been married? She was married once. And we've all been married once, haven't we? <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to try her in the morning. Sydney, it is morning. Yeah. Let's get out of here. I think I'll go check on Millie.
Janet Wilson was gunned down last night. Another drive-by? No, it wasn't that random. It was a close range with a 223. <clears throat> what do we got? Well, two possibilities. The Valley Division spoke with the neighbors. It turns out that the victim had a violent argument with her husband, Chuck, Saturday night. Nobody's seen Chuck since. Yeah, unless he returned last night with a rifle. Whatever happened to marriage counseling? No. Hi. Um... I'm sorry about Millie. I'm calling it suicide. Look, you want to go home, get I'm some sleep? Work. Okay. The victim's husband's an ex-con? They had two kids. Where are they? Temporarily at Davis Hall. Oh, great. Okay. Domestic violence is one possibility. What's the other? Revenge. Three years ago, Janet Wilson was a witness for the DA in a kidnap gang rape prosecution in the Valley. What she saw was a girl being gang raped with a knife at her throat. She got up on the witness stand, singled out the guilty parties, and all five were convicted. Since then, one was killed in prison, one OD'd, two are out on parole somewhere. And the gang leader, Paul Urbano, is a celebrity now. He somehow convinced the authorities that he was fully rehabilitated. Now he's running a community center rehabilitating other gang members and addicts. It's guys like him to make it tough on the rest of us. He's even been allowed the use of a city park building. It's hard to believe they can make a mistake like that. Yeah. Well, if we're wrong, we'll take out an ad and apologize. <clears throat> How good is this guy's alibi? That's what we want you and Jeff to find out. Finish the game without you. Get out of here. Actually, get out of here. Now, where's the ball? You're good. Thank you. Paul Obano, isn't it? Somehow I guess you knew that. Detective Shannon, Detective Allen. Somehow I guess you knew that. We need to talk. Step into my office. See you guys later, huh? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. in the files reports records same stuff you got in your files you know the city everything is in triplicate got a key you got a search warrant what's to hide not hide it's protect look people come in here there's a trust i can't betray that trust i couldn't help them if i did did you help anybody last night yeah well maybe that person could help us today huh? wait a minute is somebody i know in trouble Somebody you know has been murdered. Janet Wilson. Oh. Ring a bell? The witness. The witness. Where were you last night? Where? I'm a suspect. Well, it's not, it's not as if you haven't got a motive. I mean, come, come on, come on. Look, you guys, you guys are wrong, okay? I got over that a long time ago. In a way, I'm glad that lady did what she had to do. Changed my life. <laughs> you won't mind if I find that a little hard to believe. 
This is the guy I helped last night. That's his mother's home and phone number. And yeah, I do mind. But I learned to deal with that, too. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> He's good. Nobody's that good. I think it's time to call it a day. Madame. Mm. Thank you. You know, the one thing I like best about this time of year is going to Alex's school plays. <laughs> he came out on stage last night dressed like a mini pilgrim, and Annie and I just cracked up. His socks started falling down. At one point, he lost his hat. <laughs> but he just kept reciting those lines. I tell you, he is, uh, he is one cool kid, you know? Look, do um, you want something to eat? I don't think so. You didn't sleep at all last night, did you? I'll sleep tonight. Well, why didn't you call in? I did as soon as I found her. I gave him all the notifications. No, I mean call in and take a couple of days off. I was home all morning. You know, sometimes it's just easier to go to work than face four walls. What's the department going to do about a funeral? Well, they don't exactly turn out the brass for a retired policewoman who blew the top of her head off doesn't fit their image. You know, she had $6,000 in a savings account and a burial plot in Illinois next to her dad's grave. Local mortuary is taking care of all the details. When does the... Uh... Tonight, air freight. The worst part of it was the dogs. I thought they were going to end up in the pound, but the neighbor took it. Took both of them. Well, you know, she was lucky to have a friend like you. No, no, no. I, I was lucky to have known her. Well, what I... You know what gets me? Is that, is that in all those years, you know, the, the pimps and the killers and the dope pushers, they didn't get Millie. Loneliness got her. I think you're right. I think I need a good night's sleep. Come on, let's go. Cable News Time, 504. And now to Michael Sheldon, standing by with the rush hour traffic update. Michael. Thank you, Dan. Well, the northbound San Diego, very heavy through the Sepulveda Pass. We have an accident.
extension 3191, please. Hi. Can you talk? No, no, no. no I just, I, I need to see you. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, tomorrow's fine. 11 o'clock too early? <sighs> as long as you'll be there. Bye. I tried not to. I, I just, I was feeling so... That's okay. I would have found a way to call you anyway. Wish I could have done that for Millie. It wouldn't have made any difference. When I was in her house, I kept thinking there must have been another way. Had to have been something to keep her alive, something that she, or someone that she cared enough about. What she cared about was taken away from her. Guess we all think about that from time to time. I guess we do. But then we think about the good things in our lives. Like I think about you, who gives me such sweet joy. Mm. Mm. Speaking of sweet joy, mm. how's Gloria? <laughs> oh, oh, she's how fine. She... She's fine. How's she doing with the woman's auxiliary these days? Oh, it's okay. Just the cops' wives aren't complaining as much as usual. How's Jenny? Jenny's fine. Her earaches have almost stopped. Oh, good. She's a brownie now. A brownie? Uniform and everything. I just saw her. She didn't really, uh... Well, I guess she looked old enough to be a brownie. Four more years, she'll be a Girl Scout. Mm. Who are you calling? Homicide. Oh, say hello for me. Hello. Yeah, this is, this is Sydney calling. I, I just left the doctor's office. Can you tell me, is Jeff or uh, DiMaggio, are they in yet? Oh, sure. I'll, yeah, I'll talk to him. The captain wants to talk to me. Stop. Stop. Hello, Captain. Yes. What's going on? You found Wilson's body? Two bullet wounds in the head from a high-velocity rifle. It could be the same gun that killed his wife, but we don't know. Well, I guess that rules out domestic homicide. Yeah, unfortunately, Obano has an airtight alibi, but I got O'Donnell tailing him. Somebody is covering for him. I knew he was lying when we were talking to him. Yeah, Sydney, I got a favor to ask you. You can say no, and that's the end of it. Okay, ask. Well, the two children, they have to be told. Now, divisional homicide is Ed Fernandez set to go. But his captain remembered how well you've been able to handle children in cases like this. <clears throat> Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you, Sydney. Bye. What do they want? Somebody has to tell the kids. It's a little much, isn't it? It hasn't been 48 hours since you... It's okay. It's okay. Jimmy will be brought over from school by his teacher. It'll just be a minute. Thank you. Hi. I'm Sydney. Christine is such a pretty name. My friends call me Chris. Are we going to be here much longer? I don't know, Chris. I, I don't think so. Hello? 
This is my brother, Jimmy. Hi. Officer Shannon, I'm Scott Merrick. How do you do? Mr. Merrick's our principal. Are you really a policewoman? Yes, I am. Listen, why don't you kids wait outside so Officer Shannon and I can have... No, that, that, that won't be necessary. It'll, it'll be all right. How you doing? Okay, I guess. Mostly like trying to keep out of fights from here. It hasn't been easy here for Chris and Jimmy. Come with me for a minute. What's wrong? Why'd you take us out of school? Yeah. Where's Dad? I want to ask you something. Was there ever a time when your dad was going to be away for a while that he said, even, even though you were little, that you needed to kind of take care of each other? Yeah. He said that whenever he had to go out of town. Yeah. I, I don't know any easy way to say this. Your father was killed this morning. No, no, not both of them. How could... No, not both. I know, I know, honey. It doesn't make any sense at all. I prayed every night that he'd come back and be okay. No. The boy you did, Jimmy. So it's going to be real tough for a while. But I promise you, I'm going to be for both of you. Don't go. <laughs> no. Anything planned for the two off? special. Um, Kathy asked me to go to Captain Fenton's retirement party with her. He was running central jail when we were both working custody, so. Yeah, I plan to make that one myself. Yeah. But if you hear anything from Moreno or the, or the gang detail, I'll please. Call. Let's see what's happening in uh, Southwest. It's your old stomping grounds, isn't it? Yeah, I made my first vice bus there. No, those kids don't belong in custody. I'm gonna... Well, something's going on. Three King 12. Victim is now en route to Central Community Hospital. Teenage girl stabbed in chest and slash wound. You know, not that far away, either. Roger, 3 King 12. Anything more on the suspect? Suspect last seen by 3 Adam 15 running into alley at 36 and Hope. Suspect's vehicle is being brought in to preserve evidence of stabbing. Yeah. Let him handle it. You've had enough of one day. Well, just wait a minute. See what... Suspect is male, black, 35 years old, George Jackson. DMV registration address is 1412 West 93rd, Sealand Park. That's the third one of his girls Jackson's cut up this year alone. Boy, I would love to roll on this one. Let's go. I hate that song. Let's go. It's not fair. You, you, you put in enough time for one Come on, day. I've, I've got two off to wind down. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> all right, all right, let's go. One King 3 to Southwest Vice. We're in the vicinity and able to respond to the 3 King 12 hotshot call. Roger, 1 King 3. 3 out of 15. We saw the suspect running east on 38th place, but we've lost him now. Roger, 3 out of 15. Uh, 3 King 12, Roger. Why don't we kill the spot? Yeah. Yeah. Looking for a black and white.
buddy boy. talking about, huh? What'd she do? She holds out a couple bucks on you? Is that what it was? Is that why you slashed her? We have an argument about we're gonna have for lunch? Some yeah, major offense like that? Put you away this time, scum. You can't prove a damn thing. She'll we're do what I tell her. She time, ain't gonna baby. say nothing. Not, not all this the time. Same. You stupid you, 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 Aren't you going to be late picking up your wife? No, I got plenty of time. Captain, listen, I heard Jackson's attorney took a trip to internal affairs. Yeah, the chief asked me about it. I read him parts of the report. Your report? Uh-huh. Let's see. The uh, suspect was very violent and combative. He struck his forehead against the top of the doorframe and continued to struggle as he was being placed into the police car by the undersigned and Investigator Mars. That's a nice touch. Well, you know the girl he cut is critical. Her jaw is wired together. I told that to the chief, too. At that point, the suspect attempted to kick the undersigned. Anyway, Jackson told his attorney, and his attorney told Internal Affairs some crazy story about Sidney hitting him with the barrel of a gun. He's a psycho. He made it up. He hates women. What can I tell you? You know, that was very creative report writing, Jeff. I mean, I would have believed every word of it myself if Sidney hadn't called me yesterday and told me exactly what happened. I'll see you at dinner, Sergeant. Yeah. There's so many people who want to come, you got to try and get the stadium. <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, come on, gorgeous. I want to show the brass what I get to come home to every night. <laughs> He's been using the same line for 10 years, and I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, since you're my date tonight, are we going to stay at the bar, or should we go to the table? Hello? Hey, hey. big guy, huh? Nice <laughs> Can you hear me? It's John. I'll be right back, Sid. Hey, John! Not now, Kathy, okay? I just wanted to say hello, maybe ask you Look, for a dance later. Right now. I'll see you at work. I don't believe it. What's the matter, honey? Didn't he tell you he was married? Yeah, he told me he was married. There just isn't that much to choose from. Forget it. I've worked six stakeouts and three surveillances with him in two months. Day after day, night after night. I didn't spend that much time with my ex-husband. All the time he wants to stop in for a cup of coffee, tell me his life story. My good buddy, John Stewart. Kath, yeah, sometimes it goes with the job. They don't want their wives to meet their partners, especially when they look like you. Just get it. It was just one cop working with another cop. I know. 
Come on, let's go to the table. Look, my wife knows a lot about the cases. <laughs> no. Room for two more? Sure, please sit down. The ladies look very pretty tonight. Thank you. Just think, in eight years, I'm technically speaking eligible for all of this. Huh? Mm. <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> Ten more for me. I have 18 years to go. Yeah, well, we'll all be just a little too old to go to your retirement. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> God, they really went all out this time. Well, they sure did. Should have done it for more people. Yeah? Like who? Well, like Millie Ellis, for what? <laughs> Millie Ellis? I mean, come on, she left the department because she couldn't handle it. First of all, she did not leave the department. She was forced to retire. Come on, Sydney. We're not responsible for her suicide. Maybe we are. Maybe if they hadn't shoved her out, she'd be at this dinner tonight. Nobody shoved her out. The hell they didn't. She was just a burnt out cop. How dare you? How dare you say something okay, like okay, that Okay, okay, take her. it easy, Sydney. I'm not going to take it easy, and I'm not going to say... He didn't mean it. Well, if he didn't mean it, why in the hell did he say it? I don't know, maybe he had too much... The guy has got a mouth? Okay, let's just take How it easy, take it easy. I'm not going to take it easy, and I'm sure not going to sit here at this dinner table with some it's bad... It's a party! Of... The chief is worried. Are you planning on spoiling this party? Uh, everything is fine. It's all over, Pointer. This is a social function... Get out of here, Pointer. Look, you people think you're the elite of the department. She you think said, you can come... Get out of here. Can I, uh, <clears throat> get you a drink? No, thank you. Would you tell Captain Fenton, uh, I'm sorry if I caused a problem. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'll come with you soon. No, no, it's okay. I'll be all right. You sure? Yes, good night. Friday night's a little early to go to bed. Well, I'm glad you thought about it, Sydney. It's not home, but at least it's family. Because you're working on the Wilson murders in the valley. One of our guys found it. <sighs> not pretty. We sure could use a break about now. Can we uh, get you another drink? Why not? Hey, uh, uh, you don't mind if we stick around till your day comes, huh? Uh, you can stick around. It's going to be a long wait till my day gets here. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. This one's on me, huh? Well, thank hey, Harold. I never saw you spring for a round before. <laughs> never been sitting here with a good-looking girl like this before. You know? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. Yeah. Salute, huh?
take the ice chest, Jenny? Yep, Dad. But it's empty. You know, it was empty. I just wanted to make sure we had it so we could fill it up, my dear. Hi there. This is Sydney. I'm sorry I'm not home. Please leave your message and I will return your call. Hi, Sydney. It's me. Jack, I'm just, uh, wondering if you're okay. I, uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. You try Sydney again? Yeah, no luck. I heard she almost lost it at the party last night. Maybe she stayed with Kathy. What time is she due when an advice? 1.30. Well, I try her then. Let her tell you herself what really happened. Makes sense. Uh, we have to stop at the grocery store for ice. Don't let me forget. Sure. You need help with anything? No. I think I've got everything. As long as we're going to stop, though, we're pretty low on suntan lotion. Got it. You're sleeping with her, aren't you, Jack? Sydney? Gloria, you don't... Jack, I don't need a bad explanation. I know that you love me. Love me enough to tell me the truth. Yes, I am. more to it than that. Look, I don't have to hear that you two have been good friends for years. I know that you were her training officer and that you're very loyal to each other. At least I wasn't being unfair or going crazy. And I got it out. Gloria, I want to explain it to you. I want you not to Not now, why... Jack, okay? The kids are outside and I want to get started. Oh, it's not okay. I, I can't leave it at just saying we're sleeping with each other. How long has it been going on? The first time was years ago, before either one of us was married. And over the years... Just friends. Nothing more. When did it start up again? After her father died about a year and a half ago. But it's... It's only... Every so often... When you needed each other. Look, I've thought a lot about this. And... I'm not even sure that I want to. But I think I understand. Understand Sydney anyway. I want it stopped, Jack. Now. Hey, come on! We're never gonna get a space at the beach, Dad. He's right. Hey, Dimash. Oh, uh. Captain's looking for you. Thanks. Morning. Morning, Sydney. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Sydney. Uh, I heard you were in yesterday. Did I miss anything? Not much. It's Sunday. Yeah. I'm going through the Urbano files. Come on into the office. Find anything that might help us now. Well, one of the gang, uh, Julio Mendez, he, uh, he disappeared for a while and showed up a few months ago. Well, that sounds promising. Yeah, he has no known address. But he used to live with an aunt over in City Vista. She still lived there? The neighbor said she died six months ago, but he's seen gang members coming and going from the house. And that one of them fits the descriptions of Mendez. What now? Jeff's gonna lean on one of his local informants. Good, good. Sydney, I'd uh, like not to say what I have to say. Captain, get I'm it. so sorry about what happened at the party. Nah, come on. No, no, no. I'm There's sorry. nothing to be sorry that happens. Yeah, but what? But I'm concerned. You're under a lot of stress. That business with the pimp. 
I mean, I understand why you did it. But I'm not sure internal affairs will. They want to see you next week. Oh. Listen, under the circumstances, I might have done the same thing, and I respect you for calling me. But, Sydney, it's a danger sign. Captain, it's... I, I've just... been feeling... I've been on the department for 14 years. I mean, I found a couple gray hairs last Sasha, week, and half I just, the I don't, station I don't house falls be... into that category. You need to slow down. Maybe you should stop working weekends. I am worried about you. Uh, Captain, just believe me, if, if you'd have a lot more to worry about if I wasn't working. My snitch came through. Julio Mendez is at the aunt's house. Go. Mendes doesn't mind us dropping in like this. No, I just hope he's home and has some coffee on. The trick is how to get from here to there without being noticed. <laughs> this is not a trick in this neighborhood. That's a miracle. The minute you and I get out of this car, we're going to be noticed. So we may as well be obvious. <laughs> I haven't done this one in a while. Yeah, do you so good. <laughs> like a word with your sister. It's for your salvation. I don't need no. The cops from the park. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, yeah. You okay? Around the back. Right, got it. Got it. Lady. Think about this. You are about to kill a police officer. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, think about this. A police officer is about to kill you. Hmm? You pull that trigger, I'll pull this one. Don't be stupid. I pulled this trigger and there won't be anything left on your neck to tell your hands what to do. And there's only one way to get out of this alive. afraid of Urbano than he is of us, so we're going to charge him with everything in the penal code. If it's for you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Where are you? Uh, sure. As soon as I can. Bye. I said I must look a mess. 
Three hours ago, I was shooting it out on City Vista. I know you look good. Oh. Better than I've seen you in a long time. I heard about the bust. Yep. Taking a lot of chances, Sydney. That's the way I've been doing it for 14 years. 14 years? Where did it go? Oh, please. I get enough of that from my mirror in the morning. Please. Oh, let's forget it all in wild abandon. That's right outside Two Fingers, Idaho. I was surprised when you called me, wasn't it? Tough getting away on your day off? No. Gloria knows I'm here. And everything else? Yeah. Well, 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 well. What do we do now? Well, I guess we call it a day. It's not as if it's the first time out for either one of us, is it? Let me say, I love you. I know, like a buddy, I know. No, come on, you know better than that. No way this is going to be easy for either one of us, but I, I don't want you to think that... I don't want you to feel used or... or... discarded. Jack, look, I know what we have is, is, is recreational sex, okay? It's more than recreational but sex. But we get along, we've known each other for a long time. We're good in bed, I mean, even our conversation... In bed, I, um, I, 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 I've just, I've gotten used to them, and I hate to give them up. Well, you must have some opinion of me, huh? No. No, she, she's hurt. I, I'm not even saying she'd leave me, or, or you know, I'd lose the kid. She, she wants it stopped. Oh, well, she wants it stopped. Oh, well, then, of course, we better stop. Sydney, just... Look, Sydney, don't, Jack, just, don't. Please, don't touch me. Just go. Jack, please, go. Okay. I'm so damn sorry. Morning. Where have you been? I waited an hour for you on the beach. We were supposed to run this morning. I'm sorry, I forgot all about it. You never forget about things like that. What's going on? Nothing. I, I overslept. I don't mind jogging alone at 6 a.m., but uh, I'm worried. What's going on with you? You look terrible. I'm fine. What time will we do at the lab? Sydney, you're my partner. If there's something wrong with you, it affects me, too. Now, it isn't just Millie, is it? No. It... What? Jack and I broke up. Uh, you know, I, uh, I wish I could say I'm sorry, but I'm not. He's a dead end, Sydney. Thank you very much. Oh, come on. Once a week in a hotel suite, what's that? You deserve something better. Someone who, someone who commit to you, someone who lived with you, something. Where am I going to find this Mr. Wonderful? Tell me that. How am I going to find him when I spend my whole life chasing maniacs and killers? Jack was the best thing that had happened to me in a long time. Being alone is a lot better than being with someone who's going to keep you cut you off. What the hell you know about being alone? You go home to your wife and your kids. What? You know how tough it's been for Annie and me. I don't envy anybody that's involved with a cop, but at least she's there for me. Now, look. We're not talking about me, we're talking about you, so talk to me. So then we've been together too long for me not to be honest with you now, so be honest with me. Will you please let me handle this on my own? I can handle it. Now, don't, don't push me. Okay. Let's, let's go to the lab. Well, we 
we came up empty on a match. As you can see, the striations on the slug on the left are very similar to the one on the right. Both were almost certainly fired from a 223 rifle, so they would be close. But the slug on the right is one taken from the body of Janet Wilson. The other one was uh, test fired in the lab from the rifle you took from Julio Mendez. Thank you, Mark. They find anything more at his aunt's house, Sidney? Sidney? Uh, nothing. No other weapons. Uh, Mendez have anything to say? Not to us. He made bail at 0300. What? $50,000? He didn't have any money like that. Urbano does. Yeah, that would be my guess. Urbano? Oh, why? Of course. He's afraid Mendez knows too much. Too much for his own good. Gets his bail, gets him out in the open, away from us. Jeff, call the gang detail. Tell him to look for Mendez and stay with him once they find him. Sidney, walk back to the office with me, okay? Thanks, Jeff. This is Thanksgiving weekend we got coming up here. Is that what you wanted to talk to me about? Why don't you take some of that overtime you got piled up? Make yourself a little vacation. You know, it's not a bad idea. Why don't you go see your sister in San Diego? In La Jolla. Same difference. Get away from this thing for four days. Get some sun. See some civilized about people. To break this case open. Believe me, when you go for a bono, I'll put you at the head of the column. That's a promise. Okay. Okay. I owe my sister one. I'll give her a call. Good girl. Thanks. Oh, uh, Officer Shannon. Uh, Scott Merrick. From Davis Hall? Oh, Mr. Merrick, I'm sorry. My mind's been a little fuzzy. Sorry. Right. How are the Wilson children? They're still living at Davis Hall. I, I try to take them out to dinner every couple of days, but... Uh... What about the family in Detroit? Did they respond? No, we haven't been able to pin them down about taking the kids in yet. That's the reason I'm here. So what can I do? I want to get them out of there immediately. They're in there with older children, some of whom are delinquents, some are victims of child abuse, incest. I, I, kids that could be already permanently scarred. They try to keep them there, you know, as, as, as little a time as possible. But they can't care for them in an institution that's overcrowded and understaffed. Look, Mr. Merrick, look around you on the streets. There's a lot of kids out there that are victims as well. And we don't do such a good job of keeping them away from the people that are hurting them. I mean, I'm really sorry, but... Gosh, I mean, it's, it's wonderful that you care about those kids. I just, I don't know what I can do. I need some help cutting through red tape. I have a brother who's married, he has kids, he also has a big house and, <laughs> and a big heart. And I would love to have the children placed in his custody until there's been some disposition. I hate using that word when we're talking about kids. I can't do anything until Monday, at least. I, and I can't promise anything either, but I, I, will, I will try. I will make some phone calls. Tell the kids I said hello. I will. wrong. Except I woke you up, didn't I? No, no, that's okay. What's going on? Well, n not much. I just, uh, I only have to go in for a couple of hours in the morning, and I thought since the weather forecast was so beautiful for the weekend, I'd shoot down. Oh, no. What is it? You're leaving Kirk for a younger man, tell me. <laughs> no, we're, we're getting up at three. I'm taking Matthew to Yosemite. Kirk's gonna take a couple of extra days off. Well, that's nice. Gosh, a lot of people are doing that now. Don't you be silly now. You you go ahead and have a good time, and I'll talk to you in a few days, okay? All right. But promise me you won't spend the whole weekend working. Remember, even Dad took his gun off for holidays. Yeah, I promise. 
Listen, tell Kirk and Matthew hello, and I love them. Give them a big hug, okay? I love you. Okay, bye. Bye. That's all right, but Jack's out fishing. He went out with a couple of guys on his watch. He's coming back to get the kids up, but... It's no problem. I, I wanted to just say thank, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Sydney, what's wrong? It's funny. You know, when I was a kid, Thanksgiving used to be such a... It was a big thing. We had lots of turkey and cranberry sauce, and there was a lot of games for the kids and my mom, my dad, and Pam. Sydney, are you okay? This is so different.
Jack, Sydney just called. What did she want? She didn't really want anything. She wished us a happy Thanksgiving, you know? But her speech was slurred, and then she just kind of hung up. I found a number for her, and I tried calling several times, but there's no answer. Wanted to check on her. Call you when I can. Sydney? Thank Gloria. Well, I'm not sure I'm worth all this. Better off dead? Stop it. Oh, you saw a recent example. Did Millie really look better off? I think you should tell me about it. Except for the, the cosmetic differences. One dead body looks pretty much like another one. I mean, you wouldn't look that different from Millie with a tag tied to your toe that, in the morgue. What do you want from me? Dude's laying on the floor, on her side, and I couldn't tell until I got around the chair. The whole top of her head was just gone, and there was blood all over the rug. And I tried to... I couldn't even touch her. So I went, and I, and I, got, a, I got a clean sheet, 
And I put it over so nobody else could see the voice you should have seen. For me. <laughs> You've got to start taking care of yourself. You are important to me. You are important to this world. You got to believe that. Officer Shannon, I just wanted to thank you for myself as well as the kids. Well, actually, I just called a judge that I knew when I worked juvenile. He did whatever was done. Well, then he must have been some worker or he's some judge. I just barely got back into the office when they called. Well, he's some judge. Anyway, now they're all in favor of a temporary placement with my brother and his wife. Yeah. Best thing about it is I can pick the kids up late this afternoon. Um, will you come and see him? I, I, I don't know. See ya. Okay. I, I, Mr. Merrick, I tell you, I'll come see them maybe tomorrow after I get off work. Any chance we could go to Sydney and Scott instead of Officer Shannon, Mr. Merrick? All right, Scott. Any chance we could also go out to dinner? I mean, I mean if you don't have any plans. Uh, I don't think I do. have to retire after 20 years, but uh, I'll still be relatively young, and I know the job. I guess the question is, after 20 years, is the job still good for you? The job, your work is kind of like your life. I mean, especially for a policewoman, you know, I, I, it's all I've ever wanted to do. It's all I've ever done. I can try something different. Like what? Oh, you could um, start a business. Go back to school. You could take some time for your personal life. You just told me you've got no family commitments. What about you? You keep talking about me. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm not married. Uh, I've got close. Uh, played house a couple times. I don't know. <laughs> You're not used to talking about yourself, I see. No, yeah. but I don't mind. It just, uh, just not used to it. It's okay. It's a nice quality. <sighs> what was Janet Wilson like? She was a sweet woman, but insecure. When she brought Chris and Jimmy in for the interview, she was very defensive. I tried to tell her how high their IQ scores were, but I think she was worried that they didn't really belong there. Well, what did her husband think? He never came to the school. Unfortunately, her husband kept pressuring her to move back to Detroit. Kept didn't want to leave. 
I don't think they had a great marriage. I'm talking too much. Mm. Yes. Sydney, I've really enjoyed this dinner today. And I have to admit, it has nothing to do with the food or the service. Me too. Miss Shannon. Yeah. Detective Allen is on the phone. Excuse me. We have to take a slug out of his kidney. They're building him up for surgery now. You said anything yet? Yeah, he suggested that I go to hell. Why don't I give it a try? Hmm. Doctor, I'm Officer Shannon. How long before he goes to surgery? Five minutes, maybe less. Yeah, I'd like to speak to him. All right, but I'm going to leave the nurses here. Make it quick. Thank you. How's it feel, Julio? Get out of here. Shot in the back, huh? I wasn't shot in the back. Hell, you weren't by your own people. You're crazy. Urbano has decided you're a liability now. Urbano's my friend. He paid my bail. He bought your silence. He doesn't have to. All my life, I did everything he asked. Your loyalty is very impressive, but it's also very misplaced. He wouldn't kill me. He has to kill you. No. Officer, it's time. Who knew if those cops hadn't picked you up and brought you in here, you would be dead. And I guarantee you that when you come out of surgery, Urbano's gonna have somebody in that room to pull your plug. We have to get him up to surgery. Who killed Janet Wilson? Julio, you or Urbano? Officer, please. Who was it? You or him? Julio! I didn't do it. Where's the gun? Wait, 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 wait. Give me the gun that killed Janet Wilson and her husband, and I promise when you come out of surgery, I'll make sure you're safe. The old Avery warehouse. My name. An office upstairs. Thank you. Good luck. to do is turn this place inside out. In the dark. Like going through your grandmother's attic. My grandmother didn't have an attic. Oh, it's too bad. She didn't have a house, you know what I mean? Oh, hey! How, uh, how was your date with the teacher? Oh, my date was wonderful, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you brought me flowers. Flowers? Perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. The restaurant was beautiful. And? And the wine was delicate. And? And the conversation was intelligent. And? And then you called. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, you, the guy who keeps telling me that I need to work on my personal life, that I need to meet new men, have some fun. Yeah, but you know what I was Don't yab at me. Come on, I'm supposed to be having dessert right now or something else. Come on. You're a cop. You love this. I love this? Well, you know what I mean. You love putting the puzzle together, getting the bad guys, righting the wrong. Maybe you just said that. Following in your father's footsteps. Hey, my father <laughs> wanted a son, okay? I had nothing to do with this. He named me before I was born. Yeah, but you're still a cop. Matter of fact, you never quit. Because getting a creep like Urbano is what it's all about. I'm not so sure about that anymore. What do you want? I don't know what I want. Oh, I sound like a teenager having an identity crisis. <laughs> no, you sound more like a woman going through an identity crisis. Whatever it is, I don't like it. It doesn't feel good, and it scares me. What is it that scares you? Change. I, look, I, I, I've started questioning my life. I used to have an answer for everything, and now I don't. Well, good. It's a beginning, Sydney. You're more than just a cop, and who knows, you might even come up with something better. Jeff, I'm even afraid I'm not going to be as tough as I've always been. Well, that's OK. I can be tough enough for the both of us. Get out of here. Uh. Could you, um, stand up for a second? <laughs> we got... 
got him. Yeah. Voila. Let's put him away. Yeah. Put him away. Forever. And let's put this away. I'm glad I've got a match in one of those weapons you brought in. Good. Jeff, Sidney, thank you very much. All right, everybody, listen up. We've asked for warrants to search Urbano's house. His office is at the park. His sister, uh... Chata. Chata's apartment. Listen to this. Yeah, Urbano's branched out from gang rape, into drug pushing, prostitution, even interstate shipment of pornography. Yeah, well, that ties in with the information we got from Detroit on Chuck Wilson. <laughs> and by one of those weird ironies of life, Urbano was taking over a territory run by the husband of the woman who put him in the penitentiary. So they threaten him and his wife. Why doesn't Wilson just fold his tent and go back to Detroit? He wanted to. That's what the kids said that they were fighting about that night. Mama found out what Papa was up to. She wanted out. He wanted to go back. She, she wanted to stay. Okay, as soon as the warrants come down, we go for a bond. Oh, no, it's fine. And uh, Listen, I understand completely. I'm really sorry, Scott. We're going to have to work right through the night. Just call me as soon as you got the case wrapped up. Thank you for being so understanding. Give the kids my love, and I'll see you soon. Got that. Something going on here I don't understand. Not a thing. The judge must be memorizing those warrants. Jeff. Sydney. She was pretty good out there a while ago, huh? She put it all together for me? Yeah. You know, I was worried about her. She seemed, uh, I don't know, a little depressed, maybe a little tense these past few days. The pressure's always there, Captain. I mean, it gets to us sooner or later, some more than others. It's gonna be there when you go after Urbano. Are you asking me whether I think she can cut it out there? No, no unless things have changed around here, that's still the Captain's assessment. But I gotta admit, in a crisis, I'm not sure that she won't freeze. On the other hand, she just might blow Urbano out of his socks. But there's only one place we're gonna find that out. I guess so. Harrison. Yes, Judge. Thank you, sir. It's a go, Jeff. About time. All right, everybody, it's a go. All three locations, brother and sister. Come on, let's go. Go. Rock and roll. Come on, excuse me. I got it. It's okay, you have it. Can I hand you a drink? So sure he's still here? Yeah. We'll find out. I'll try the other side of the building. We'll get the office.
trees. Trees right there. You're bringing the boogie boards. I'm bringing the lunch. I like peanut butter and jelly. Well, I make about the best peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in town. Bye. Bye. See you Sunday. Did you tell your brother and his wife that I'm going to pick the kids up on Sunday? Sure, but you may end up with their kids, too. <laughs> That's all right. What about you? Oh, Chris and Jimmy see me every day at school. I don't. I, uh, feel like maybe I've been coming on a little too strong with you. I haven't felt that. When you canceled our date, you sounded like your whole life was on the line. I was. I mean, we, we finally made the guy that killed the Wilsons. And we, we had the warrants. We were going to go bring him uh, in. No, it sounded I... like more than that. take a really hard look at myself and I've seen some things that I just don't like and I have to change them I, I need to start working on some things I started well now no okay I'll start now what now come on let's uh, play hooky now yeah what if we get caught 